across the road and never even look one way. I always seem to know the perfect thing to say. And I don't even wave at other cars when I pass by. Don't have the time, you know I'm such a special guy. And all my friends are telling me that I should be ashamed. But I'm not even listening, cause I'm never to blame. I spend a fortune, but I never pay the tab. I just don't give a damn when I make other people mad. And I throw my fellow humans under buses when I can. It's doggy dog out there, so why not man eat man? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Feedback Loop for yet another week here on the Studio Live Today channel. Yes, I'm having a few bandwidth issues, but uh, that's nothing new, is it? Let's uh, go over to there. Um, my name is Pete Johns, and this is Studio Live Today. This is the Feedback Loop. This is my weekly show all about mobile and music recording, home recording, and creating your best music. In fact, I say my little tagline is I want to help you create, record and release your best music. So that is what I'm all about. That is the sort of videos that I make and the sort of tutorials that I uh, create here on the channel are all about how to get your best music, how to get the best out of your home recording and your mobile recording setups. And today we're talking about gear because uh, I did some videos about gear during the week, uh, or during the last two weeks really, um, and I got some interesting responses to that. Some, and look, 95% very positive. Uh, I think a lot of people uh, I was able to help by the, the gear reviews that I did and by um, by suggesting some of the, the stuff that I use. Um, but there were some other interesting uh, opinions that some folks had, which we will get to as we go along. For those who are here live, thank you for, for joining me here. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, I'll say hello to you all in just a moment. Um, and for, the, for those watching on the replay, uh, yeah, you haven't missed out too, because you're going to get all of this, uh, all of this next uh, half an hour to an hour. It really depends uh, how many questions I get and, and who's here on the live stream but we'll be answering some questions live. We'll be talking about some of the things, some of the questions that I've had during the week, and then we'll be breaking down some of the uh, topics that have actually come up because uh, I get a lot of questions these days from folks um, about their mobile recording about GarageBand on the iPhone and the iPad, which I use a lot, and uh, about a whole bunch of other topics. So we will get into that in just a few moments. If anyone who is here live can uh, confirm that my audio and video is coming through loud and clear, as I said, I did have a, a, a small issue, um, well, a few small issues uh, with my uh, my audio setup So um, and the video and the bandwidth and a few other things. So you would have seen that my little, uh, my little animated man there on my intro was a little bit uh, blurry. So apologies for that. So let's just jump in and start talking about gear. So why do I say that uh, gear is not the answer to recording better music? Um, well, I think the the point that I'm making is that uh, a lot of people tend to hide, not hide behind, that's the wrong word, it's not that negative. They tend to use the fact that they don't have the right gear as an excuse or as a reason why they're not creating music. And uh, to, to the detriment, they're actually going out and often spending a lot of money and buying new gear because they think, well, the problem is I don't have the right gear to actually be able to record good quality music right now. Um, and that is not the case. So uh, I've done a bunch of videos and I've got a lot of other people that are in sort of my network that record amazing music with just their phone, just their iPhone, just their iPad, not even with microphones, audio interfaces, MIDI controllers, all of that. You can use your iPhone, your iPad, the touchscreen, the, the built-in microphone, you can get some pretty good sounds. And the, the key to music and the key to getting good music is not necessarily having top-notch gear that is going to give you the absolute best quality sound because you know what a bad song badly recorded on Amazing Gear is? A bad song. So the first part of getting the best recording you can is writing a good song. Now I know that's easier said than done. Writing music and writing good songs and writing catchy songs with good hooks and good melodies and good harmonies and good rhythms and all of that is a challenging thing. And that's what a lot of us are here to do is to try and create the best songs. And that's why uh, when I talk about creating music, I say, I want to help you create, record and release your best music because the 
other challenge that people have is that they compare themselves. And if you've been on YouTube for more than five minutes, you've probably seen the array of videos from Dave Pensado and from even like folks like Graham Cochran and Joe Gilder, who are at that home studio sort of level. A lot of the gear that they have is this high-end stuff. So you're thinking, oh, unless I have like a 32-channel console and uh, all of this outboard gear, I'm not going to be able to create good music. Well, yeah, not the case. Um, that's great that those guys have moved on to a point where they have access to that sort of gear, but most of them started back in the day on a good old fashioned four track recorder or a tape machine or something like that. So yeah, there's no need to say I can't actually do it because I don't have the right gear. It is all about having the ability to actually get going, get writing, start writing a song. So how do you write good songs? Well, you start writing songs. So you start writing and write as many songs as you can because like most things in life, your first song that you release, that you write, that you release is probably not going to be your best song ever. I don't think there's too many artists who the first, second, third, tenth song is their best song ever. It might be, you might look at their catalogue and go, oh, the, the tenth song that Billy Joel released, I always use Billy Joel, I don't know why, um, was my favourite song ever, but that was probably his hundredth song that he'd actually written. He'd probably read a whole bunch of stuff that never actually saw the light of day. So taking away from the gear, going right back to the songwriting, writing the best song that you can and writing lots and lots and lots of songs and just get continue to create music. That's my sort of number one tip outside of gear to actually get it. The number two tip is how you actually record it. So how do you actually record it and getting a clear, and, and Joe Gilder, who's over at homestudiocorner.com, if you don't know of Joe's site, you should check that out. Very, very cool guy. Uh, he talks about getting it right at the source, G-I-R-A-T-S, get it right at the source. And that just means about getting the best quality recording that you can. And it doesn't mean you need a crystal clear preamp and you need a $1,000 interface and you need a $1,000 microphone. It just means that whatever you have, if you have a microphone like this, the Samson CO1, which is like a $60, $70 large diaphragm condenser microphone and a mixer like I'm using, the Samson mix pad, which is like a $150 mixer, then... If that's what you got, then use that, but work out how to set it, work out how to get the best quality sound into your digital audio workstation, into your iPad, into your iPhone, into whatever you're actually using so that you can actually get the best recordings. So that's sort of number two is making sure that you're getting it right at the source, regardless of what gear you have, because once again, if you have your settings wrong, you can have a thousand dollar preamp and make it sound really crappy, or you can use the built-in microphone on your iPad or your iPhone, and as long as you set the input gain right, you add the right sort of EQ in there, it's going to sound good, which sort of takes me to number three. Uh, and again, not related to gear, um, but is mixing. So mixing your songs well and learning to mix. And like the songwriting that I talked about before, mixing is about practice. Mixing is about making sure that you do it over and over again. Repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. Keep mixing your songs because your first mixes again are probably going to sound terrible. And I know it, it might sound a bit demotivational to say, oh, but I want to know how to do it and I want them to sound great now. But it's unlikely that they will sound great now because you need to practice. You need to learn what works for you, what works for your music. And the, the, the thing with mixing and music in general is that everyone's music is different. Therefore, everyone's mixing needs to be different. And the most common question I get from folks is, how do I set my compressor? Uh, how do I do EQ? Like, which EQ should I be boosting and reducing? How, what sort of reverb and what sort of delay should I add? What effect should I add when I'm mixing my song to make it sound really good? And the answer, really frustratingly, is it depends. So it depends on what the music is that you're mixing. It depends on the sound of your voice. It depends on the tone of your guitar. It depends on how punchy your drums are. Do you want them to, en do you want to emphasize or do you want to bring those down? So that's kind of the, the third rule, I guess there, not rule, but the third thing I want to say about recording using not gear or with whatever gear you have. And <clears throat> finally, it, it is about finishing. <laughs> and I talk about this all the time. But I don't know if, if any of you have been on some groups, on some forums, on some websites where they talk about they talk about a gear a lot. And there's one in particular, I won't mention the name because I don't really like the name of the site. But anyway, there's a lot of places where they talk about gear. And there are a lot of guys on there. That, like, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of guys that are really into their gear that still produce amazing music. And they just happen to love tinkering around with the gear as well. But there's also a lot who get 
really stuck into the gear and they're talking about their gear and they want to try the new latest and greatest and they want to diss other people for using what they consider it's bad gear and the question has to be asked like yeah they're spending thousands of dollars and thousands of hours of their time in forums discussing what the best interface is instead of just getting on and recording and mixing and mastering and releasing their own music so the question I tend to ask is if someone gives you a lot of advice or especially if someone comes at you pretty hard. So if someone says to you, oh, you can't possibly write a song and release a song using just your iPhone, then the question I have is, well, that's good. Maybe I can learn from you. What, what music do you have? Show me your catalog of music. And more times than not, they don't have any music. They haven't finished. They haven't released any music. Or if they, what they have... Yeah, it might be of an okay sort of quality. So I'm, again, I'm not hating on people who want to get into gear. Don't get me wrong at all. Gear is important. I like my gear. I'm a tech guy. I'm a nerd. I'm a geek. I love new things and flashing things and dials and switches and lights. But don't lose sight of the end game. So the end game is that you want to create, record, release your best music, or at least that's what I hope, because that's my goal here on this channel is to encourage folks to do that. And a heap of people are doing that right now. I'm always really encouraged and really motivated by the number of people who talk to me, who chat to me, who reply to my videos and tell me that they are actually helping them create music. Because I don't want you to say to me, hey, Pete, thanks for that microphone review. I just bought the microphone. Hey, that's great. But then what I want to hear is, and I then used it to record this killer track, take a listen. So that second part. So I won't stop doing gear reviews. Like, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I, I do gear reviews because I like gear. Um, I do use affiliate links. Like, I'm 100% transparent and upfront about that. So I really appreciate that. So when when you folks do go out and you listen to my gear reviews and you buy gear, then, yeah, I get a, I get a cut of that. They chip off a little piece and throw it my way. And that helps me fund the channel and the work that I do here. So that is all good. So before you say, hey, you're a bit hypocritical there but you use gear you do gear reviews and now you're saying don't worry about gear gear is important but it's that 80 20 thing like the gear is 20 percent the actual recording is 80 percent and that's why you'll see 80 percent of my videos here will be about the process and 20 percent will be about the gear and the stuff so that is my monologue rant for today so we will get into it now so i'll catch up now and say hello to the folks who are here live so we've got william gomban jr who is in hawaii aloha to you checking in from hawaii uh, i've got son ek who said coming in loud and clear beautiful kenneth briggs is on the channel here um we, yeah we'll mention william We've got Maffy's Garden. We've got my, my friend Matt Anderson, who I'll, I'll talk about in a moment, actually. Um, we've got William Jones here. Um, uh, Ansi, sorry, uh, greetings from Russia. First time caught you live streaming. Welcome. Great to have you on board. Um, yes, and, and they're the folks that have, uh, have chimed in and said g'day. For those, the rest of you that are watching, uh, say hello. Drop into the chat. Let me know where you're from. Uh, what's uh, what's going on? Uh, and maybe your opinion of gear. So, what gear do you use? Do you have any other thoughts or opinions on this? And for those watching on the replay who aren't lucky enough to be here live, then drop a comment and let me know what's your opinion of gear. What gear do you use? And how do you uh, how do you balance out that use of gear versus the actual recording, songwriting, mixing, mastering process? I need a quick coffee break here. Okay, <clears throat> so I do have a, a question, so I'll jump into the live questions and then I'll get back into my pre-sort of prepared, I say pre-prepared, but the content that I have before. Um, so we've got uh, William Gomban Jr. Uh, I want a video iOS app uh, with reverb for audio, any ideas? So you want to so record a video, so yep, video iOS app with, uh, with reverb uh, for the audio. So... There are, now I, I'm not the expert, which is going to sound bad, and other people may be able to chime in here and, and provide you with some feedback, but um, Audiobus and AUM are, and, and I actually asked this question yesterday, is that do folks want me to look into some different types of, um, some different types of software, DAWs, or all of these things. So um, I may be looking at that in the future, but there are, there are basically routing uh, apps that you can get where you can actually route your audio through other things. So there are standalone reverb processes. So every uh, AU plugin for, for things like reverb, for EQ, you can use standalone and you can use as a plugin like you can in GarageBand. And what you can actually do, I believe, um, is actually use them to route your audio through so that when you're sending it into your video 
app, whatever you're using to record your video, whether it's just a camera or whether it's something like Movie Pro uh, or one of the other sort of higher end video apps that you can actually use the effects. And it's something that I'm actually investigating at the moment. So I don't have a great answer for you right now, William, but uh, watch this space because um, I'm doing similar sorts of things. I've, uh, the reason I have a mixer that I use now for my live streaming is so that I can actually EQ and compress and it does have some effects. They're not great effects, but I have tried them when I'm doing live performances with just like an acoustic guitar to add some reverb because that is something I know a lot of folks want to do is that they want to actually record videos and then instead of having to do all the post, post processing, so instead of recording the audio and then having to mix it in GarageBand, they're actually able to um, yeah do that on the way in and you can do that with software a lot easier on the Mac or the PC, uh, but it's something that I think I'll look into. So I'm going to add that to the list uh, of things to, to talk about because uh, yeah, I do get that question quite frequently, which is uh, from people saying, I want to uh, A, be able to uh, record video using uh, like a USB microphone or an interface like for better quality audio, which you absolutely can do. Anytime you connect up using one of these, which I have here, uh, a lightning to USB connection, anytime you connect up with one of these um, to your i phone or iPad, then this becomes the audio in and the audio out. So uh, a lot of folks don't necessarily want to create music, but they want to create high quality videos with really good audio. So what you can do is connect up to an interface, which is what I do to create a lot of my videos to do the, the voiceover and the commentary for, for some of my GarageBand videos. I actually hook up this microphone, but via the Lightning to USB and via my Steinberg UR12, which you are all probably really bored with me talking about because I talk about that interface all the time because it is my favorite little interface. Um, oh, I've got uh, so uh, Danny Elliott. Hello from Mexico, Danny. Danny is one of my uh, one of my most prolific commenters and always has a lot of great feedback on my videos. So welcome to you, Danny. Great to have you along. Um, so Kenneth uh, is from Wisconsin, uh, Chip Chippewa, Chippewa Falls in the Wisconsin, the USA. Uh, use iOS for all your podcasting and trying to learn to make a song for the entrance and the exit. Excellent. And yeah, podcasting and making sort of background music and, and sort of intros and outro music is something I also get asked a lot about. So I actually need to refresh my intro music. So I'm actually working on a project at the moment. So once again, watch this space. If you, I know most of the folks here are already subscribed to the channel, but if you're not, um, yeah, this is that bit where annoying people on YouTube tell you to like, comment and subscribe. So I won't even say it, but yeah, all those things. Um, but I do want to start doing that because I need to, to refresh because I wrote the theme music for my channel before I even had a channel and I just wrote it in GarageBand using uh, the virtual instruments, using the, the touch guitar and it. it. It's okay. It served me well and it's like a nice familiar thing that we have at the start and the end um, of, of my videos. But yeah, it needs a refresh. Like there's no excuse for me as an audio guy with an audio channel to not have an intro that sounds a bit better than the current one does. Um, so I, I will be working on that. But yeah, the idea of doing uh, background music actually really appeals to me as well. So my videos aren't really the sort that have a lot of background music because I'm obviously talking about music. So I don't tend to put you know background music in my intros and outros, but I know for a lot of folks that do podcasting, that do vlogging, that do other types of YouTube content, there is a big demand for that, for the ability to do that. So that may be something that I uh, I look at and branch out into. I've got uh, got some, I've got about a list of about 30 things. So every time someone suggests something, it goes on the list and I'm about 30, probably 40 behind at the moment. So uh, lots of stuff to do, plenty of time. Um, so we've got some more comments here live so uh so that was kenneth briggs uh doo -doo -doo. yeah so son x says uh, i feel your ability to create definitely needs to overpower the gear is that a bad opinion uh no not at all so and i think that's that's what i was talking about before that what a lot of folks do and i completely agree with with your comments there that a lot of folks get over enthused about the gear and the gear actually gets better than them and that might sound a bit harsh but you want to and it comes to, a lot of people say the same with GarageBand. They're like, I need to move on from GarageBand. I'm like, no, you need to use GarageBand to write some better songs. So the, the, the desire to make things better and to continue sort of improving, sort of people just want that little bit of a shortcut sometimes, but the, there is no shortcut. The, the way to better songs is to keep writing and keep recording better songs. Like my friend Jeff Brown, who's, uh, who's here in the, the stream as well. He, he, I'm sure he uh, can attest to that. Um, yeah, so writing, um, writing better songs is what it's all about. And the gear is should be complementary to that. So don't get the gear, don't let the gear get ahead of your talent. 
<laughs> I certainly haven't. I've got another couple of years before I start need to start upgrading. Like it took me 20 years of playing guitar before I bought uh, that Taylor, well, that side, that Taylor guitar back there, um, which is like a thousand dollar guitar, which I think is pretty extreme. Yet there's folks out there that are still tinkering away that have just gone out and bought themselves like a $5,000 Gibson. And uh, yeah, they're probably not, not at the level where they need that. They probably need a $200 Strat copy. Uh, anyway, um, I'll, uh, I'll stop ranting <clears throat> on, on that because uh, I think we've all made our point. Um, we've got some more questions here. Uh, where do you get uh, where do you get your AU plugins for iPad? I can't find it very. I can find very few on the app store. So yeah, um, there is. Oh, now I've got to remember this. Um, some of the folks here may actually. Uh, so Jeff Brown has come in. Yeah, search AU three to find the plugins. There's uh, some great Facebook groups actually. There's one called Audio Unit. Uh, iOS plugins and it's like an it's like a list it's like a master list and every time this question comes up I, I never have the link handy so I need to I need to like link it at studiolifetoday.com slash something so that's a, a job for later uh, but if you head on over to there there's also another couple of pages there there's the uh, iPad musician which is a great Facebook page. So there's a lot of resources, and a lot of links to some great uh, AU plugins there. Um, the GarageBand users Facebook group, of which I'm one of the admins, um, and Jeff Brown, who's in the stream, is a member of. Uh, that is another great, um, great resource. And then the other one I recommend is uh, Doug Woods over at the Sound Test Room. So I know a lot of you would be familiar with Doug and familiar with the Sound Test Room. Um, Doug does some great reviews of iOS plugins and he's all about iOS music. Like his channel is really, really good. Lots and lots of great uh, resources there. So that's uh, that's a few tips and a few resources that I would suggest. But yeah, if you're, if you're not on Facebook, as Jeff has suggested, just search au 3 in the App Store, some of my favorites uh, plugins are actually made by Fred Anton Corvest. So the FAC bundle is actually really good value. It's a maxima. You've got a, a chorus effect in there. There's some some really cool effects. And the other one that I like um, is the the Rough Rider EQ, um, which if you're looking for an alternative to the standard EQs for uh, iOS, then the Rough Rider. Check that one out. I think just search Rough Rider AU again, and you'll have a look at that. So. Thank you for that. Um, and so we've got Danny in here. So if you're a non-musician doing videos, you could get great results using Apple Loops to create theme music. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and I can't justify the expense for an instrument because, uh, yeah, <laughs> because I don't have nearly enough talent. Oh, well, you know what? Practice makes perfect there, Danny. Keep uh, keep practicing, keep performing. But yeah, you're right. Um, I actually made a song which I've got a video coming out on soon, I think. it's I've got a lot of stuff in the, in the works at the moment, but where I use just virtual instruments, and yeah, you can get a lot of good sounds, especially with the alchemy synth, with a lot of the instruments that you have on GarageBand, on iPhone and iPad. Yeah, there's a lot of flexibility. If you don't play guitar, if you don't play keyboard, if you don't have a live instrument, don't stress out. It's not a big deal. Uh, you can still create some really good music with just what you have virtually on your device. So yes, keep doing your thing. And thank you for, for to Jeff, to Danny, to to, uh, to Son, to all of the folks here that are chatting live. Uh, if, if the folks here live do have any further questions, throw them down in the, the comments as we go along here. And if you're watching on the replay, once again, thank you for watching. If you've got questions, you can leave them in the comments on this video. And I do read every single comment and I reply to pretty much every single comment, unless it's really hateful, which might talk about a little bit more a bit later. Um, uh, I do reply to everyone and uh, yeah, and I do use those questions to, uh, to source the next week's uh, questions here in the feedback loop. Okay, sorry, a little bit more coffee, a little bit more coffee and then we'll jump back into it. So let me check my list of things to talk about. So we've talked gear um, and I've talked about uh, why it is perhaps not important. What I wanted to, to cover off, so another question that I get, and I showed this before, I don't know where my USB 3 version is, but this is the Lightning to USB adapter. And I know a lot of folks here are into mobile recording, recording on iOS, recording on iPhone and iPad. So this will be a quick little section for those folks in particular, because I get a heap of questions about what you can and can't connect using one of these devices. So I thought I would break it down based on my experience of what you can and what you can't connect. And I've tried connecting virtually everything to my iPhone and iPad and with varying levels of success. So the first thing that I mentioned right up front is that uh, to connect things to 
an iPhone or an iPad. Using this connection, you need to, the, the device needs to be what's called class compliant. So class compliant just simply means that it's like plug and play. It means that there doesn't need to be any additional drivers. The problem is, as you'd probably know with your iPhone or your iPad, you can't actually add a driver. So you can't actually install a driver. So if you've got an old MIDI keyboard, they seem to be the ones that struggle the most. An old MIDI keyboard that you try to plug in and it's not class compliant, it'll just say this device accessory is not supported and it won't work. If it's class compliant, you'll know because it'll say nothing. <laughs> so unfortunately the Apple universe is like, yeah, if it works, it says nothing. If it doesn't work, you'll get that uh, accessory not supported. The other thing that you'll get a lot of the time, and the other thing we need to talk about up front is power. So when you're plugging in devices, you need to make sure that you have enough uh, power for that device. If you don't, then what you need to do is use a USB hub. So a powered USB hub, um, which you can pick up from Amazon. You can pick up quite cheaply. They're usually about 20 to $30 for a decent powered hub. And what that is, is just a USB hub, so like four ports or seven ports or whatever, that actually plugs into the power socket. And you might think, well, doesn't that defeat the purpose of being mobile if you have to plug in? Well, yeah, kinda. But if you're using an iPad or an iPhone and you've got a big device, so some of the, the devices that won't, I don't have it here handy. I, I meant to get everything and collect it here, but it's over there in that pile of crud. Um, if you've got a USB microphone, so a lot of the larger USB microphones, they won't have enough power. So you'll plug them in, especially to an iPhone, it'll just say uh, this accessory uses too much power and you won't be able to use it. So keep in mind that if you are plugging in a bunch of stuff, USB hub's actually a really good idea anyway, because it means you can separately power everything up. And I've showed, <coughs> excuse me, I've showed in a video before um, how you can connect up a bunch of things. So when I'm having a serious recording session, what I'll do is I'll have this little baby, I'll have my Steinberg UR12, and I'll have that connected via USB. I'll also have my MIDI keyboard connected via USB, both through a, a USB hub, which means that they can both be powered by the USB hub's power, and then my iPhone or my iPad doesn't need to be uh, doing any power duties at all. It can use all of its power just for GarageBand. So that is my setup, and yeah, if you search Pete John's uh, USB hub, um, then you'll find the video where I go through that. And as usual, I'll try to remember to link it at the bottom at the end of the stream, but I'm, I'm, I'm really bad at doing that. So that's why I give you the, here's how to find it during the stream. Um, so that's my suggestion for, for connecting USB devices and using a USB hub. Uh, if you are low on power, uh, just going back to my notes here. <laughs> so what else can you actually connect? So I've talked about USB interfaces. So any audio interface like my favorite little baby here, the Steinberg UR12, can be connected as long as they are class compliant. So some of the higher end interfaces that need their own specific drivers to run, they won't be iOS compatible. If you check the manufacturer's site, they'll usually tell you whether they are or aren't, or well, no, they'll tell you when they are. And if they don't say anything at all, they probably aren't. And I'm actually working on a, a complete list at the moment of iOS compatible interfaces based on the feedback that folks here on the channel and over on the GarageBand users Facebook group have given me uh, because I, there's, there's real lack of resources out there. If you're in the market for an interface, it's kind of hit and miss. You have to work out what does and doesn't work and it's, yeah, it's not so cool. Um, so I'm working on that at the moment. Uh, so yeah, audio interfaces, microphones, so USB microphones. And again, I don't have one handy, but you can plug those directly in. MIDI keyboards like that one you can see that there yeah so any class compliant midi keyboard that's an old e keys 40 e49 um but yeah with you've got an akai you've got an m audio there's a bunch of different manufacturers that make uh, keyboards that are class compliant that will work the majority of them produce if you've got a usb keyboard and it's in the last 10 to 15 years it's probably class compliant there's a few of the older like yamahas and casios and things that from the early days and if you've got the the one that has the the two uh five pin din plugs as opposed to usb you'll need an adapter and you need to make sure the adapter you use is class compliant so Again, be be cautious there, and it, it is. It's a little bit of a minefield trying to work out what is and isn't. Um, audio interfaces, audio cards. So I, again, I don't have it handy unless I can reach it here. Uh, no, um, but you can get little um, USB audio cards. So I've talked about these before, especially for folks that don't have a three and a half mil jack. You can get a USB sound card that you plug in. That's a sound card slash hub. So you can plug in USB devices, but it's also got a three and a half mil jack. And again, I'll try to remember to link to the video I did about that. But if you're using an iPhone 7, 8, 10, or the new iPad Pro, then it's a, a good thing to have because you can get audio and you can uh, 
get a three and a half mil jack as well as USB input into your device, which is very cool. Mixers are another thing, so you can't see my mixer, but my Samson mix pad is here doing its thing. And keyboards, so computer keyboards like this one. So a USB keyboard you can plug in, which is really handy because if you've been using a GarageBand with the keyboard shortcuts, you can just, uh, if you've got your hub going on, just throw a, a dongle from a USB keyboard into there. And then you've got your keyboard, you've got your musical keyboard, and you've got your interface. You've got your own little mini studio set up right there on your iPhone or your iPad. It can be a very cool setup. So what doesn't work? Well, I've tried a few things that don't work. Um, gaming controllers, someone uh, kind of dared me and I found an old Gravis uh, USB gaming controller. I didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I plugged it in and it said accessory not supported. So that was sad. I thought I could play some like FIFA or something uh, with my gaming controller. Um, a mouse, a mouse doesn't seem to work. Now, I don't know whether I've plugged a mouse in before and it hasn't said it's not supported, but I think the problem is software. I don't think there's any software on iOS that actually does support a mouse. So maybe that's why my mouse isn't working. I don't know. Um, and the, the big one. So this is the question I get asked more than any other. So sorry to bury the lead here, but what about a USB flash drive, thumb drive, pen drive, hard drive, uh, any sort of drive? And the short answer is a big fat no on that one that you can't connect a standard, a standard USB flash drive to iOS, which is a pain in the butt because you think, well, you got your lightning to USB adapter. Yeah, and you can't just throw a, like a USB plug in there. That goes in there. It's just a USB connection. Yeah, and you've got a USB drive. It's the iOS file system, that's the problem. So iOS doesn't have a standard file system, which means that when you connect up a USB flash drive, unless it is formatted exactly like a memory card or like a digital camera, then sometimes you can get them to work with the Photos app, but only for photos and videos. Any other type of files, especially music and video, sorry, music files, are not going to work with a standard drive. Now that's not, all is not lost there. Uh, there's a heap of iOS compatible specific lightning thumb drives that are coming out these days. They are about two to three times the cost of a standard USB drive. So SanDisk make their iExpand range of drives and there's a bunch of other sort of, uh, um, yeah, knockoff brands that are doing kind of the same things. And there's also sort of little Wi-Fi drives as well now, which you can connect to via Wi-Fi. The problem is that they all use a proprietary bit of uh, software. So the, the app that you need to install on your iPhone or your iPad is going to be uh, separate. So it doesn't just integrate nicely with all your files. So if you were looking to do that, then uh, yeah, you're a little bit out of luck because uh, yeah, it doesn't work. So there you go. That's that's just a little breakdown. And I'm, I am going to do a video about the USB thumb drives specifically because again, it's a question I get asked a whole heap. Um, and yeah, I, I need to actually have it out there because every time I do a anything about the Lightning to USB adapter, almost the first comment is always, hey, can I put a thumb drive in there? Will it work? And yeah, answer is no. So sorry about that. Sorry for the quick rant, but hopefully you found uh, a little bit of interesting there. Uh, so let's just check back to the chat. Uh, so Kenneth says, I use some IK Multimedia software. So yeah, IK Multimedia makes some really good stuff, actually. Um, they are AmpliTube that they make, which is a really good um, uh, amp sim. I don't use it anymore. I used it really early on. Uh, it was one of the first amp sims that I used. But then, to be honest, GarageBand's amp sims now uh, are at the level where I don't use a whole lot. But there's, yeah, there's a heap of them. And IK, uh, what else do they do? They do the sound bank. No, what's it called? Sound bank. There's a bunch. I've got the, the vocal live. They do... The, the big sort of sound sample one. Um, but yeah, if you search IK Multimedia AU, you're going to get some good plugins as well. Um, if Pete is talking about Heart, check it out. It's a great song of his. Oh, thank you, Jeff. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, that is the song that I'm working on, uh, which I was talking about a little while ago where I just used uh, virtual instruments. Uh, yeah, a song called Heart. I'm still working on the mixing. I've done the demo of it, which is over on my SoundCloud, which I'll no doubt forget to, uh, to link at the end. Maybe we'll take a, a quick listen to it uh, at the end of the show today, and I'll just uh, talk you through a little bit about it. Uh, if we have some time, which we may do, because we still got uh, still got a good 20, 25 minutes here. Um, and then Son X, so I uh, feel I need to learn about music theory and playing chord progressions, how to create melody and things in order for me to be ready to really create. Yep, uh, built off of loops, but that doesn't really make me feel the best. Uh, yep, um, which, 
yeah, so recognize notes, I'll be able to play and uh, advance into the wonders of all these different software out there. Yeah, so uh, a lot of good points there that, that, uh, that Son is making here, which is that when you are getting into music, um, you don't have to be an expert. Like, you don't have to know every bit about music theory. There's a lot of folks who are creating a lot of really good music who don't actually know a heap about the actual music theory behind what they're doing. And that's not super... Um, important but as you go on like it does actually help you to learn and even if you're just learning and, and Dan Baker so if you're not subscribed to Dan Baker search for him on YouTube check out Dan Baker's channel because he does not only a bunch of iOS recording stuff a bunch of music creation stuff but he does a bunch of theory stuff and this is theory we're not talking about the old piano teacher theory that I never did and got in trouble for when I was a child we're talking about really interesting theory so learning about the circle of fifths learning about different chord types and different progressions and how everything works together and scales and like you wouldn't think that scales are interesting but learning the different scales and how they they intertwine and, and what they actually do and, and the relationship with different notes is actually super important because it can actually make you think about different ways. And if you're just producing music and you're like, my music's very sort of static and doesn't have a whole lot of variety, learning about some new types of chords, some new types of scales can actually really help you out and it can help you experiment and do new things. So i uh, got to give a shout out to Dan Baker because uh, his channel is awesome. So subscribe to it and you'll get some good tips. <clears throat> Um, oh, and uh, Daniela has got another tip here. So search YouTube for Michael New if you want to learn music theory. He's an excellent teacher. Uh, th that is very cool. I'm going to have to do that, Danny, because uh, I have not actually, I'm not familiar with uh, with Michael New. So there you go. I, I learn as much from you folks as hopefully you learn from me because uh, that that's what it's all about. Caring and sharing information, which is very, very cool. Um so we've got a question here from D Money. What is the best was what is the best way to record off iRig Pre? Uh, so the iRig Pre is uh, is an interface. So it's an iRig interface, which is a preamp basically. So it's a microphone input, and I believe the iRig Pre is a Lightning connection. I'm just going to have to look it up. I don't actually own one, so I'm just going to do a quick search here for the iRig. Pre, okay, so there, there's the iRig Pre and the iRig Pre HD. So the iRig Pre uses a three and a half mil jack, and that's very similar actually to the device that um, that I reviewed in the last week, which is the Tascam iXZ. So it is just a, a microphone uh, input and XLR at one end and a three and a half mil jack at the other. The Tascam iXZ is similar, but it's a microphone slash guitar input and then a three and a half mil jack at the other. So if you're using the regular I, uh, iRig Pre, then you can connect that up um, just by plugging it in. So you need a three and a half mil jack on your iPhone or your iPad. You plug directly into that. You plug your microphone into the other end, and then that will be your audio input. So that will be the input and the output for your audio. If it's the iRig Pre HD, then you connect it in. Um, you connect it in via the the Lightning connection. Um, so gain. Uh, what is the best? Wait, our best gain. Um, so if you if you're looking at what gain to set, um, yeah, that that can be a challenge. So with any sort of so with the iRig Pre or with any sort of uh, preamp or any sort of audio interface, setting your gain at the right level is, is really important. And my key thing there is that less is more. So what a lot of folks do is that they push the gain up until it's like 80 or 90 percent and they you know what you do when you test you go test one two three test one two three and then when you're singing you go yeah, yeah like you can hear there right it's a very different volume so what you need to do when you're setting your gain is sing the part don't test your gain settings by just talking or by doing a test one two three start singing and then dial your gain in because you'll find you have to dial your gain a lot lower than what you originally thought because again you go test one two three you're not going to be loud but when you are actually singing you are and the same with your guitar playing if you if you're recording a guitar same thing play the actual part don't just go twang 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 okay that sounds about right because what you're going to do you're going to really kick into the middle of your song and then you're going to clip your signal you're going to be too high on the gain you're going to get uh, distortion and clipping because you're going to go up above zero db into the red so yeah whatever you're using whatever sort of interface you're using start with lower i've always said with these days with digital audio interfaces especially it, it's so much easier to add more gain back in but once you've clipped your signal you, there's no going back once it's distorted it's distorted you can't actually remove without with a whole lot of work or, or successfully you can't remove distortion from a signal but you can increase your volume 
Um, do, 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 do. So, yeah. And, and Danny said, uh, back on the other topic, to be honest, if, if you're going to be improvising, you don't need to know a lot of music theory. Yeah, true. Um, so you don't need to. And again, it comes back to need versus versus want. Like, don't don't go away and uh, you know, and spend the next four weeks learning music theory because I think you think it's going to make you a better songwriter. Like, yeah, find out a little bit more and then see if you can implement some of those ideas in your tracks and keep writing and keep creating and keep recording. Really important that you, you don't lose sight of the big picture, which is that we're all here, hopefully, to create uh, better music. All right. How are we going on time? we still got a little bit of time left to go. Thank you for, for all the questions here, folks, and, and the engagement. Always good to have the folks here on the live stream uh, asking questions that we can get answers to, or in, in a lot of cases, not answers. But at least if I don't know the answer, I can say, here's some ideas, or here's some things to look at, or here's someone else's channel that has the answers. <laughs> That's always a good thing. <clears throat> uh, a couple of topics that I, I discussed during the week. So we talked about uh, mic bleed during the week. So if you don't know about mic bleed, that is the process of your microphone catching what's coming out of your headphones. So if I was playing loud music into my headphones right now and then recording audio over it, there's a chance that this microphone is going to pick up the audio from my headphones. Now, the reason I use these which are these Sennheiser HD280s is that they're a closed back headphone. So they go all the way around my ear. And the other thing that I mentioned in the video that's good, as they're tangled up amongst everything else, is earbuds, because they go all the way into your ear and they isolate the sound. So I'm not gonna go into a bunch of detail here, but if you are interested in seeing that and you haven't checked out that video, and you're recording a microphone source with headphones, then take a look at that video because it will help you with some tips on how you can reduce the amount of bleed. And actually, uh, my friend uh, Daniel Nilsson, um, gave me another tip here, which is that if you are using in-ear monitors and you happen to have these, you can actually put that inside that and it's not super comfortable, but you kind of get double duty. And you could probably do the same if you bought like some of those industrial kind of earmuffs that you see the, the folks out on the jackhammers using. You could probably put those over your in-ear monitors and create a, a cone of silence, so a cone of isolation there so that you can prevent your mic bleed. So uh, yeah, if you're interested in learning more about that, uh, jump in and check out the uh, the video that I did during the week on microphone bleed. Um, cool. So I'm just checking, uh, I don't want to, I'm very conscious that I don't want to just be s uh, sitting here reading the chat all the time, but I want to make sure I don't miss any uh, any questions or anything that folks have to say. Um, so I've got no gear at the moment and thinking of getting a low cost set for recording, I would include uh, into this set camera USB 3 adapter, some cheap mic and some cheap audio interface. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I've done, I kind of did... The series of videos I did last week was basically exactly that, that if you have the lightning to USB adapter, you have something like a, uh, this one here, like the Steinberg UR12, and then you have a microphone like the MXL550, 551 set that I, I recommended. Uh, yeah, that's the sort of thing I think. So for you know, less than $200, you can get yourself uh, up and running with uh, a microphone, an interface, and uh, an adapter. So that is good. Mr. Ponk80 is on the stream. We were just talking about you, my friend. I was just talking about your amazing amazing tip around uh, the mic bleed with your in-ear and your uh, over-ear, which I've ne still never actually tried. I must get into that and actually give it a go. Um, alrighty, what, uh, where were we up to here? So we're talking about mic bleed. Um, I did uh, a video yesterday around, uh, around key signatures, talking of music theory that we were before, talking about key signatures and how to use key signatures in GarageBand. So uh, this is going to be for my GarageBand folks. So if you're not a GarageBand user, just bear with us for about uh, about five minutes while we talk about this topic. Um, there might be some other GarageBand topics, actually. So I've got a question off the back of that, which is, can you transpose live instruments? So you can transpose, which means you can actually shift them by a number of tones or a number of octave or a number of semitones or a number of octaves. So uh, when I showed the, the key signature, I showed that if you change it from like B flat to C, what it would actually do, it would shift all of those sounds by one tone to go from B flat to C. And then uh, you can also go into the actual settings on a virtual track, on a MIDI track and say transpose by like X number of semitones up or down or X number of octaves up or down. So you've got real flexibility. The reason for that is that what a virtual instrument does is it stores MIDI data. There's no actual sound information stored. It's just the information that says play a C2, then play a D2, then play an E2 and play it for this amount of time with this amount of sustain and with this pitch bend. Like it's just ones and zeros. Yeah, it's just data. 
So the great thing about data is that you can manipulate it. So you can take that data and say, take all of these sounds and move them all down one tone. And then the software in an instant can just go chunk and it can change everything like that. The challenge with audio recorded tracks is that they don't work that way. So if I'm recording my voice, if I'm recording a real live guitar or any other sort of analog audio source, it doesn't behave that way. It is sound wave. So yes, it's a digital sound, but it's an analog sound that's been converted to a digital sound. So you know what happens when you transpose analog sounds? Well, you would have heard this. Like if you use a sampler or you use something like that, the higher it is, the shorter it is. So unless you're using some software, and a lot of desktop digital audio workstations have this where you can actually sort of time stretch and you can pitch shift maintaining. So you can pitch shift, but maintaining the same length of note. But the majority of the time, in something like GarageBand, if you use the sampler, for instance, and you hit a really low note, then it's going to be a lot slower. High note, it's going to be a lot faster, just because that's the way audio works. It works as a, it's a sample, and then for it to go higher, it just shrinks it down and it plays it faster. Um, so the short answer is there's no really good way to transpose your recorded sounds, so your voice, your guitars, anything like that. There's probably ways, and, and Ponkate here in the stream has probably already got ways or got suggestions for how to use other apps or to bring the audio into another app or to use some other sort of way to actually do it. But in terms of simple transposition, yeah, it, it is not possible uh, at this point in time to do any sort of adequate transposition. But again, if you are using a whole bunch of virtual sounds, it does make it super easy to transpose and to get that sounding good, which is cool. <clears throat> All righty. Uh, where are we? So what were we talking about? So we talked about um, transposing. The other question I get a lot around GarageBand and related to MIDI is can we output MIDI? So at the moment, unfortunately, no. Uh, GarageBand's MIDI limitations are that it can play its own MIDI track. So when you are recording a MIDI track using a, a MIDI controller or using the touch screen, you can actually record that and you can import a MIDI file. So a .mid file can be imported with reasonable success sometimes-ish, and you could actually play back that MIDI file. What you can't do is send MIDI from GarageBand. And once again, I know Ponkady has been playing around with this and trying different methods, and I don't think there's been any success to date. Um, other, and, and this, again, I asked a question during the week is, do you want me to look into other sorts of mobile digital audio workstations and other apps? So things like Cubasis, Aurea, some of the other uh, digital audio workstations do actually support MIDI and do have a lot to better support for MIDI in, MIDI out. So yeah, maybe if you are really into MIDI and you really want to, uh, to output MIDI, uh, you might need to look around at some of those other uh, digital audio workstations. Um, I talked briefly uh, earlier um, about uh, Matt Anderson. So I don't know if you're still on the stream here, Matt, <coughs> but uh, Matt, uh, who goes by the name Maffy's Garden uh, with his music, he uh, produces, he, he's quite new to, to music, but not new to music. Okay, how do I explain this? So Matt is similar to me. So Matt was a, played in bands, was a musician, guitarist, singer way back in the day. And when I say way back, no disrespect. Matt's probably about my age. Um, had that hiatus, did the did the you know the family, the mortgage, the kids, the, all of that, and then is at the point now where he's like, I want to get back into music. I want to start creating music. So he released his first single uh, probably a month or two ago, which is a song called I can't remember the name of it. Me, me and the girl, me and the girl. Um, which is really, really cool. And he's just almost finished, I think, in the close of, still here. Yeah, he's still here on the stream. Still uh, almost finished his new song. So, um, which is sounding really, really good. Um, so he sent me a, I was lucky enough that he sent me a pre-release version. Um, I, I gave him some feedback, which he ignored. No, he didn't ignore. <laughs> uh, no, I gave him some feedback and said, man, this really needs a kick and guitar solo, which now it does. It has a cool guitar solo in it. Um, but yeah, I really love it. I love the, uh, he's got some 90s vibes and he's got some uh, some sort of rock guitars in there. And yeah, it's, it's just, it, it's very cool. For, for folks like me who like music like that, um, yeah, it, it's really cool. And, and I did have a point with this. It wasn't just to promote Matt and his music. Um, I, I've been asking, I've been asked a lot of questions about mixing. So about getting the mix right and, and and in fact, um, when when Matt sort of showed the, the latest version of this song, I'm like, oh, I'd like to hear more of the vocals. And then I kind of questioned myself and went, well, actually, I think it, the problem is that I mix my vocals too loud, <laughs> which I've been, I've been trying to work on. It's a bit of a problem of mine. The problem was that 
when I didn't like my vocals, and this is this is what tends to happen with folks, is that when I didn't like my vocals back in the day, what I would do is I would bury them. I'd bury them under my guitars, I'd bury them under my bass so that you couldn't really hear them. And the reason for that is that I wanted to mask any imperfections. I didn't do any of this consciously, but subconsciously, I wanted to mask any imperfections and, and make sure that people couldn't go, oh, that was such a flat note or that was such a sharp note. Um, and then as I got sort of better at my recording process and better at singing, I was like, oh, these vocals have to stand out. So then I went too far the other way. So now when I'm mixing vocals, I have to be really conscious that I pull them back down. I pull them down into the mix because they should be sitting with the mix, but they shouldn't be on top of the mix. And that's one of the hardest things to do. And one of the tips that I have for that is a, a liberal use of reverb and delay. So in GarageBand, for instance, you've got your master reverb and your master delay. I tend to crank those up. Like, don't be afraid to use those a bit. Uh, not to just sort of, again, to mask any problems, but they can be the glue that brings your mix together. Adding some reverb, adding some, some EQ, not EQ, and reverb and some delay can actually glue your tracks together and can make them sound really good. And especially for vocals, it can, if you've got some reverb or EQ on your vocal and your guitar and your, and your, um, drums it can make them sort of cohesive especially in a rock track because if you think of a rock track what you're listening for is that like it's a band playing in a space yeah so even though in these days we record our drums virtually well i do uh, we record guitars we record bass and then we record vocals all separately you want to create the feel generally of a band playing together so if you add the same sort of reverb even if it's only you know a little bit 10 percent, 15 percent on every track it glues that together it makes them feel like they're all playing in the same room so yeah when, when i'm doing rock tracks that's something that i do there but no well well done to uh, to matt um yeah he, he's he's getting stuck into it and he's uh, uh, i've been at the um the cricket which i know matt will understand but other people may not have a whole lot of uh, understanding of which uh, at the test cricket goes for five days so it's day four of the test match today so the last three days I've been going to the cricket all day, sitting in the sunshine or yesterday the rain, uh, drinking a few beers and having a good time. And Matt was like, oh yeah, I might not see the cricket. I'm going to write and record this entire song. And then I got back from the cricket that night. He's like, here's my song. And it's sounding awesome. So well done. Uh, and it's good. And, and I did a video recently as well, which again, I will probably forget to put in the link below, but um, I did a video on um, uh, on Matt's original release. So where I stole some bits from his YouTube channel and took a look at them and then, um, uh, yeah, talked about his, his journey, I guess, because it's a lot of, a lot of folks are on that same journey and I'm, the vast majority of people here are here because they want to create and produce music. A lot of people are just starting out in their music creation. But there's a lot of people who are kind of, it's their second time around, I guess. And GarageBand is giving all of us, or thus frustrated <laughs> musicians of, uh, of the 90s and, and noughties, it's giving us that second chance because we don't need to go out there and buy thousands of dollars of expensive gear. We don't need to book recording studio time. We don't need a band. Like, we can do this in our own little audio caves by ourselves. Um, so it just gives us that flexibility and that freedom uh, to do that. Uh, I like the new hat. Yeah, no, I, I like this one. Uh, I needed a new a new Australia hat. Um, so, yeah, I thought I'll, I'll wear that on the stream today because, uh, yeah, it, uh, it cost me $40. <laughs> what is it with merchandise? I, I could rant on the whole going to a gig and paying $50 for a T-shirt, but anyway, um, we won't do that today. Let's uh, check the, the comments here and see if I have not missed anything. Uh, so Danny said he's used GarageBand on his iPhone and iPad, but Logic Pro X on the Mac, yeah. So there's a lot of folks that, that are similar to that, that, that do use Logic. I use Reaper on my PC here. So uh, everything's GarageBand and iOS, but then I use a PC with Reaper. So go figure. Is it possible to use GarageBand on a Kindle? Wow, that is a, a good question of which I know nothing about. I, I'm, I'm lost with the Kindle. The Kindle used to just be like those e-paper readers, and now I think the Kindle has a whole bunch of other things it can do. It's basically like, it's like the Amazon Fire tablet. I think the Kindle's kind of like that now, isn't it? Um, yes, you can always remix your vocals, says Pong Katie. Uh, anyone else hoping for a major December update of GarageBand? Uh, I am. <laughs> so I, I still haven't heard any more on this and I haven't even heard any speculation. So I do sort of joke about the fact that uh, half the people that I talk to or that comment on uh, on my channel here tell me that GarageBand is dying, that GarageBand will not be supported, there'll be no new versions, like you better enjoy the one you've got now because Apple have stopped developing it. And then the other half of the people are like, oh, GarageBand is really kicking up a notch, the next versions are going to be really good uh yeah so there, there's a bunch of uh, different opinions out there i don't know if we're going to get a big version um i would love to see you know big version uh uh 
hang on, what about two, three points? Yeah, like big version four, like a big for whole version upgrade. I think we'll probably get a point version upgrade um, in December. But uh, yeah, um, I won't speculate because I'm generally pretty wrong <laughs> when I speculate about what's going to happen. Uh, my bag bro, welcome from the Ukraine. Great to hear you. Thanks for having you along. And Carlos Martinez. Um and Carlos says, uh, this is Carlos, uh, the blind guy. Is it true that GarageBand is a little more detail, uh, is a little more detail on the Mac Mini? Uh, yes, so it is. Um, so GarageBand on the Mac does have different features. There's some features it doesn't have. Obviously, it doesn't have a touch screen and other things there. Um, but it does have some more options there. And I think, so um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll chat about this briefly because Carlos um, raised a good point. And there's some other folks on here uh, that, that comment on my videos. So there's Blindsight, who's is an amazing rapper um, who is legally blind uh, as well. And there's a lot of other folks here who are visually impaired who use GarageBand uh, to produce music, which I have so much respect for, first up, because using the, uh, the voiceover function on your iPhone or your iPad to use apps, I have accidentally turned it on before. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, my iPhone is talking to me. Siri keeps talking to me. Um, so I've, I've turned it off. But Apparently, there's a lot of folks out there who are creating music and, and doing a great job of it uh, on their iPhone and their iPad, but it would be a very challenging thing. So uh, Carlos has kind of thrown down the challenge to me uh, as to whether I can, can do some videos about using voiceover for GarageBand. So I, I kind of want to do it just to, I guess, get an appreciation and, a, and an understanding of what it would be like for folks who are actually not able to see the screen, but still wanting to record music. Because I think music is amazing and it's a great thing to do for folks. And yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, obviously, if you can hear and if you can talk or if you can play an instrument, then you can create music and it should be accessible for everyone. So uh, I think that's super cool. And uh, yes, I'll, I've added it to the list, Carlos. So I'll see if we can uh, see what we can do there. Uh, and Jeff Brown has said it's my fifth time around. So, <laughs> so Jeff Brown uh, of Brown and Garrett. So I, I always say that, uh, that Jeff produces an amount of music that puts me to shame. Um, he, he and uh, John Garrett, uh, yeah, produce a whole lot of music and a whole lot of sounds. So Jeff, uh, put, a, put a link to your SoundCloud or to somewhere where folks can listen to your music in the, the chat here because uh, we're about to finish up. So why not go and uh, listen to some Brown and Garrett uh, action there? Speaking of which... I wanted to say thank you to everyone who's been here on the live stream. If you've been watching on the replay and you do want to join us, I do this every, what is Sunday morning my time? It's usually Saturday afternoon in the US and Canada, and it is uh, Saturday evening for my European and UK uh, viewers, listeners, uh, contributors. Um, so I'm here every week. And we talk about a topic and then we answer your questions. So we had some great questions today. We talked about gear. We talked about GarageBand. We talked about uh, a whole bunch of other things related to music creation, to interfaces, to setting gain levels, uh, to using uh, GarageBand. And will there be any feature updates? Um, yeah, let, let's speculate on that. Maybe that will be another a video idea for the week, Ponk. Uh, maybe we'll I'll, I'll do a video on uh, speculated features for GarageBand. It's always a fun one to do. Alrighty, um, I'm going. I didn't mention it before, um, but Jeff uh, Jeff kindly mentioned that I had a a new song that I've been working on. So I'll uh, I'll go out by playing this one. Now this is a demo version, which is why uh, the uh, I actually recorded. Um, I've talked about these headphones before. My JBL Endurance Run. They're actually caught up in my interface here, um, but I recorded the vocals with with these, with the headset microphone. So if you're wondering why the, the vocals sound a little bit tinny, I do need to re-record them because I didn't have this right and I haven't EQ'd them yet. And yeah, they're sounding a little bit dodgy, but um, I recorded the song using just the virtual instruments here in GarageBand and just a few uh, vocal tracks, which I recorded on here. Uh, need some work, but this is the demo version of it. Let me just uh, bring up my, uh, there we are. <clears throat> so here is my SoundCloud. You can go to soundcloud.com slash Pete Johns if you want to check out my uh, SoundCloud. It's usually where I put the pre-release versions of all of my songs. So a lot of these would look familiar if you know um, if you know what I actually release on my albums and the singles that I put out to using DistroKid. Uh, but this is sort of the, the pre-testing ground is here on SoundCloud. So if you ever wanted to see what I'm up to, you can head on over to here. But I uh, just wanted to say thank you again to everyone. Um, thanks for being part of the channel here. Thank you for all of your comments and all of your support and your feedback. If you like this video, please uh, tap the like on your way out. Drop me a comment if you have any other further questions and we will go out now if I set my levels right. And, oh, no, I've got my, uh, I need to turn down my 
myself. <laughs> I have myself streaming in the background. So we'll go out now with the demo version of my song called Heart. Thanks again, folks. Be on time, value the time of others as much as your own and you will find that they value you. Appreciate that other people don't feel like you, don't act like you, and that's okay. Enjoy your own company, it may be the only time you'll be in complete agreement with someone else. The words stop worrying will make someone worry more than any other Know your roots and respect the beliefs of your ancestors, but don't be afraid to think your own thoughts. Think long and often, but try to think about the things you can control and don't focus on the things you can't. Respect your parents, because until you are a parent, you never really understand just how much they've done for you. Make mistakes and have the humility to admit them. Those who don't make mistakes aren't trying new things or telling the truth. It's your life. Go ahead and live it. Hear these words and listen to your heart. If you choose to get married, stand alone and appreciate it for just a few seconds. This will be the memory you have for life. If you have children, don't stress about this week's little problem. I'm pretty sure your 18 year old will no longer need you to wipe. And don't focus on being right. Being wrong sometimes is okay and it means you are always learning. It is okay to be bored. Boredom allows your mind to think about new and exciting things. Brains are awesome. Catch up with friends who give you energy and good times. It's okay to cut off some who don't. Have empathy for everyone you can. You never know when you may need a little in return. Think carefully about that big problem you have right now and whether you'll even remember it in a year. If the answer is no, it's not a big problem. And finally, choose carefully the advice you listen to, especially in the lyrics of a song. It's your life, go ahead and live it, hear these words, but listen to your heart. Thanks again, folks. Have a great day. I'll see you soon.